This is Sinister Chaos, and we're playing Dead by Daylight. Alright, so the character we're playing now is Pyramid Head, and the goal for this round is to take out the survivors, which there is four, um, and their goal is to turn on the generators. So, of course, it's a vicious game of cat and mouse, so our goal is to find them, knock them down, and put them on the hooks, and what the hooks are is basically a sacrificial hook, which calls upon an entity to come and consume the survivors so right now we're not really hearing any noises that's a generator um, as we're getting closer we can start hearing the generator noise and find survivors gotcha bitch uh, we got that one and we're gonna go get this one oh uh -huh. it's your turn oh uh -huh. gotcha and then uh, basically, you see in there laying down uh, scratch marks, which kind of look like blood trail, but they're not because they're sprinting. That lays down scratch marks instead of blood. Uh, but if they keep running, it will lead them to the survivor. So, right now we're just kind of chasing this guy down. And this dumbass throws down a pallet in front of himself instead of throwing it and down in front of the killer. So therefore, he gets promoted to the hook. So a survivor can be put on the hook twice and rescued from it. They can take a chance and try to escape from it, um, but if they fail, it will actually summon the entity faster. Um, the really sure chance of getting off of it is to be you know rescued by your companions in the game um, so this guy's gonna get another smack in the good old head there you go uh, pick him up there and you know put him back on the hook so this guy has earned his second right as you can see the entity starting to, to be summoned and this guy gonna use that good old rock and I whiffed <laughs> well all right well we'll get him again and eat dirt and this woman's like here I'll help you no oh he sliced me oh god and I'm gonna pick him back up and he's gonna earn his third stay on the hook which now he will be consumed by the entity. This one's trying to window jump and we got her. Oh, what a whiffer. So we're going to pick her up and she's going to be granted a first class flight to the second hook. So once you use a hook and the entity consumes a survivor on it, you can no longer use a hook so you have to find another one. Um, those dinging noises are... Uh, generators getting activated um, now that now it actually gives the survivors a, you know a certain amount of generators they have to activate to open the doors in the game so the doors basically allow the survivors to escape um, the killer is trying to prevent that from happening 
So right now we're still hunting down her other companions, which there is... Th looks like three more to be done. So that companion rescued her friend off the hook. So we're going to go ahead and introduce her again to the hook. Just because she escaped. And there she goes. Second stay. On the hook. So this will be her second time. Yeah, you know, she's gonna hang around there for a few, maybe. So when the survivors are hooked, the hook actually turns yellow, you can see it on the map. And this person wasn't too smart, trying to snake there when the Kelly was still around. Well, she gets to take a trip on the hook as well. And what they're doing, they're, the grunting noises they're making, they're trying to struggle and get away. If they're successful, they will actually make the killer not being able to move for a few minutes um, to be able to try to get away. And what's that gives them a, more of an advantage of being a survivor and kind of makes it so the killer's not too overpowered and make it more of a fair match. Um, now, we got two survivors on the hook. We're just searching for the third survivor. Um, probably hiding. So, as you can see, this guy right here saved that girl, and he was also inflicted with the rights of judgment, which is what you see me laying down on the ground with the sword that kind of looks like a bob wire. And it gives them a status effect. Just kind of shows they light up red and as they're running and makes them scream. So, the you know, generators you see with the lights on and they're constantly running. Those are the activated generators, so they still got two more to activate. As you can hear, there's a generator running. So what we're doing is going up here and we're going to go ahead and do some damage to it, which regresses any progress that they have made on that generator to repair it. Uh, now when they come back to work on it again, they'll have to get back up to where they were. So you see me doing it here again. I actually caught a glimpse of a guy running over here. But he's not very smart. He's going to run around this tree. They play Pop Goes the Weasel. And this weasel is going to get... Oh, popped! Ooh, weren't so quick now, were you? Oh! So, he gets to have a good old stay in the hook. So you get um, you get some good points when you start hooking survivors and chasing them. This game is really well defined like that. This Pyramid Head character, he's actually a um, character in Silent Hill 2. One of my favorite games to play. I love playing as Pyramid Head ended by daylight, so... It's been actually been really, really awesome that they brought him into this game. So what we're now doing is hunting for his female companion. Which she's hiding around here somewhere. So what we're doing is just kind of scoping out, see if we can see in her just sneaking up somewhere. That generator's still damaged, so she hasn't been there. So as you can see, there she is sneaking. So we're going to go ahead and kind of try to sneak up on her. There she goes running. Do some parkour. And I whiffed again. I mean, if this was baseball, I definitely would have struck out by now, for sure. Alright, now she gets her second stay on the hook. scream so now good old slappy over here is hiding again so you gotta kind of hunt him out they recently introduced crossplay into this game which is I think is great so they allow PC switch and Xbox players to play with PlayStation players which is awesome um, some people love it some people hate it I preferably love it makes it more 
of a challenge playing against PC players because they can't play with a keyboard and mouse and they believe they're the best because they can do so my favorite thing is slapping them and putting them on hooks it's my favorite thing to do um, so you see he actually rescued her from the hook which gave an indicator so let me know that they were rescued now oh, she's running for her life and I whiffed again like I said we're just struck out by now as you see what she's gonna do is the right thing to do with a pallet not like her dumbass counterpart did when he stopped himself from getting away from a killer which kudos to her for that well, what she's not too smart of is that she ran and left scratch marks and gets hit in the corner a lot so what we're gonna do is take her for her final trip to the hook which will be her third time so she, the entity will come and consume her so in this game once the third survivor is taken out the last survivor has an option to go to a secret trap door that opens to escape immediately which of course they have to hunt that down and it makes it easier for them instead of waiting to unlock all the door all the generators to open the door so you see he actually failed the skill check so now he's running away and leading me straight to him this guy's what I like to call a dancing buffoon I'm a dancing buffoon I'm a get this good old cleaver upside the head because I'm acting like an idiot oh there you are so this is actually the last survivor he is now being placed on the hook so therefore we have actually won this match in Dead by Daylight and therefore have successfully completed well, I thank y'all for watching this. My name's Sinister Chaos. Y'all keep it chaotic. Have a good one.